Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so guys the topic for the day is virtualization so we are just covering virtualization topic there is no lab it's just a theoretical topics okay uh, from your syllabus point of view this is the portion which we are looking forward to okay it's a complete and core topic there is no nrc uh the virtualization is not a part of nhs it's just a n core okay so we are going to uh, uh, discuss what are the different virtualization technologies what are hypervisor type 1 and 2 what is a virtual machine what is a virtual switching okay and apart from this i have also added few more topics uh, for your reference which you can go through okay okay virtualization now this is a concept which is emerging everywhere so basically the main concept of virtualization is instead of deploying something okay instead of deploying something or instead of uh, uh on premises you can use something which is centrally okay not not i i won't i wouldn't say cloud okay because the term cloud which we use often is once again somewhere deployed in someone's data center right so let's say example of dropbox or let's say aws server or let's say we have um, any any cloud technology okay uh, gcp google cloud platform azure so if you talk from any technology point of view or any any uh, services point of view they are after all deployed in some data center someone's data center in the sense might be dropbox has some data center unit in some country okay uh, let's say it's uh, us and this is a data center from dropbox and they have the huge racks of devices and all rest of things okay so why do we call virtualization or why do we call it as a cloud most of the time is they have allowed or they have created this data center in multiple regions and users can directly connect from various countries on these data centers and globally they can view for example if uh, if someone who is in us okay might be he had uploaded some files inside dropbox uh, so basically his file will be somewhere in the us region somewhere close to us region but let's say he just fly and he just reaches to uh, on next day he reach somewhere somewhere like in india okay so his dropbox account whatever he uploaded the file previous night they are still going to be accessible to him right because might be dropbox has a data center in india as well so basically the us and india they will be in sync okay we call for our reference that uh, dropbox is on a cloud uh, dropbox is centralized or whatever but in in real they are somewhere on a data center okay and centrally or uh, on a uh, internet basis they are getting synced up so we can access it from any part of the world so we call it as cloud okay now let's say instead of uploading it to dropbox he would have uploaded those files to his uh, computer local computer right a local computer in his uh, us apartment or something and now he just flies and reaches india and next day do you think he can access to those files because that's a local computer he don't have uh, access to that computer that computer is something where the person has to 
physically be present open the system uh, go to the folder and access them he cannot check it over online or he don't have that provision of having some uh, connection to the cloud or something where he can take the remote control okay so that's not happening in case of local computer so in this case his files are just within this computer his computer can act also be called as a server because it's basically you're storing the file right so something where you store the file we call it as server and these are not accessible so these kind of technology we can call it as a private cloud or private server right so these are few things few differences between cloud on premises and uh, all all of this okay so let's first discuss the cloud deployment models so what are the different cloud deployment model okay so don't be confused with the term cloud it's it's again once again somewhere in someone's data center only thing is they are a big brand they can have the data center in various countries between their data centers they are taking care of the traffic migration and all those things as a user as a customer i only is bothered about my files which uh i uploaded in us and once i reach towards india i need my files to be accessible that's my concern i for my reference i'm going to say the word as cloud because i'm a customer i don't know what is a data center i don't know what is cisco router don't know cisco switch or something i just know that my files are accessible on both the regions so somewhere it's in a cloud or it's in central but as a network engineer we should be aware of that it's all on a piece of rack or server where these files will be loaded up only the back backend is between data center to another data center the the normal as usual what we know about networking uh, isps the protocol the switchings uh, the securities all those things applies okay so <clears throat> there are couple of deployment model the first model is public cloud public cloud as as you can say it's uh, some example like dropbox aws and so on okay you can also have a private cloud private cloud is something where the access is given just to limited people not to everyone there's something called as community cloud a group of similar users who are who wants the service and hybrid cloud mix mixture of two or three different cloud you you have a uh, you have your service loaded on aws you have your authentication loaded on the azure server you have your vpn service going on gcp a mixed model in your enterprise okay so let's talk from first one what are the different public cloud deployment model so basically uh, as i told you the 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 bigger brands like dropbox microsoft uh, onedrive onenote okay so all these kind of big brands they have the data centers in various locations okay like us uh, australia singapore india africa okay and they have their own network medium to connect data center to data centers they will have their rack rack services routers which is servers storage units firewalls same every every on every data center okay so users who are very close to us they will use the first data center the person who is very close to australia he will be accessing the public server the, the public deployment model or whatever let's say dropbox for an example he he will be using australia so basically it's a centralized way if he is uploading some files uh, uh, from his house and when he just reached uh, his office the files will be still in the server uh, on the cloud server and he can access it so basically we call for our references cloud but in the back end it's somewhere storing 
uh, storing in the Dropbox uh, data centers. Okay, so public server is accessible to all the people. Anyone can use it. But yes, if Dropbox is setting some pricing, then you have to pay the pricing for their uh, services because you know how many data centers are involved here. What are the services Dropbox is offering you? What is the uh, maximum file storage you can keep in the Dropbox? So depending upon that, Dropbox has their own engineer. So it also has to pay uh, their engineers, their code, the sof software developers and a lot of things, right? So basically they will also have some pricing list. So as a user, I have to buy the, uh, buy the service, buy, buy any package and I can use it. It's a public cloud, okay? There's no restriction un unless or until I'm good with their uh, package and the plan. Now let's move to private cloud. So here in case of private cloud, we have some examples like OpenStack, uh, Microsoft, Azure, Stack, VM Cloud or VMware V Cloud, okay, and AWS Outpost. So these are certain services offered by uh, the respective vendors or respective companies like AWS, VMware, as uh, Microsoft, OpenStack. These are on a private cloud. Okay. So in the case of private cloud, this will be accessible to only limited companies who are a premium customer for them. Say for example, uh, in the case of uh, let's say the VMware vCloud. Okay. So as a global, they have multiple products. They have workstation player. They have uh, the uh, the multiple VMware products, right? Let's say some of the product is on their private cloud. That means customer will pay and get the service from there. It's not open for any regular customer, not as an individual. Okay, that's that's their uh, limitation of private cloud. It's it's something which a normal uh, common person will not need it. Okay. Uh, uh, say for example Dropbox is something which everyone needs right so that's on a public cloud anyone will pay and buy it private is something where it's for a company or for an enterprise it's not for a common person right so such are on a private cloud so company will pay and use it it can be some uh, LLDP authentications why do a common person need a LLDP authentication so these are package which are sold to the enterprises so the customer buy it and they use it. Okay. So that's a private cloud. Uh, a short example would be if you are aware of AWS. Okay. In Amazon Web Services, we have a concept of VPC. So VPC is also very similar to private cloud. So basically in VPC virtual private cloud, what we basically do is we create say let's say this is complete uh, cloud service we create multiple vpcs and we allot vpcs to customer xyz one two three abc so as a customer we give them services like a private cloud in terms of asa if you remember we call them as dmc when when we play some uh, devices on a DMZ and those DMZ access we give to a customer. Uh, so basically we are virtualizing something, right? So this kind of deployment model is private cloud. It's not for all our uh, entire world. Okay. It's just who wants it. The company will deploy it and the customer can use it. Okay. Let's say I wanted to use a software, payroll software from a company called as SAP. Uh, Germany okay let's say from this company what SAP is going to do is SAP is going to keep their server in on their uh, DMZ okay on their DMZ and they are going to allow my access on this server so now this becomes a private cloud for me I, I, it's not something on their 
uh, side which is accessible to everyone. The other people cannot access this. This is only accessible by myself. Now, what is community guard or cloud? Sorry, community cloud is something when private cloud or let's say some organization like four to five organization uh, who are uh, having the same common interest. Okay. When I say common interest, it can be like some uh, compliance results, some some security policies, uh, mission objectives. Okay, some some certain things which four five companies need it. It can be let's say some package, some automation package, which four five companies have planned to buy it as as a one package. Okay, it happens. If you remember, in the case of Udemy. We have courses which individual students can buy, as well as Udemy is providing a corporate or a business package where a corporate can pay them and they will be getting access to every courses. Right? Similar way, in the case of cloud community, let's say that four five organization just join together who have the same need for the package. They are ready to pay them and get the services. Okay. Say for example, example would be AWS GoV Cloud. Okay, similar way we have some Microsoft Cloud for governments. Okay, so these are some examples of community cloud. Now, what is hybrid cloud? Hybrid is scenario where, let's say your mail exchange server is hosted on microsoft server on on let's say azure okay and uh, you have you have need for aws for the authentication okay let's say aws is giving some authentication package so basically you are integrating your azure with your uh, aws authentication okay so this this can be on your private cloud this can be on your public cloud so basically integrating of private with public or private and private of two different vendors or a public and public of two different vendors so that's a hybrid cloud so this kind of requirement or this kind of design you will often see in enterprises okay uh, so examples are as i said like mail exchange from uh, microsoft aws authentication or there's something called as cisco hybrid cloud platform for gcp or google cloud similar way there is also ibm hybrid cloud There is also something called as a uh, rack space. Okay, so these are some examples, and these are all the different deployment uh, over on cloud. And you know, cloud is a data center, so it can be on premises, off on premises, or off premises. So depending upon that, we had some deployment methods. Now regarding cloud virtualize or, or regarding compute virtualization. Okay. So over here I am going to discuss about two subtopics. One is called as container. The other one is called as virtual machines. Okay, so first let's talk about virtual machine. So if you remember when we uh, basically, basically what do we use for uh, loading any software or any operating system. So basically we, we 
go with servers right or let's say if i have a laptop then my operating system will be loaded on laptop or if i have a computer my operating system will be loaded on computer now these devices they have some limitation might be they run on a single core might be they run on a single processor right increasing will be expensive in nature so these are some serious concerns when we go with these devices like uh, some physical servers okay because they are very costly laptop computers they are going to be uh, intense power consuming devices so what are the options now so basically what happens in this case are so graphically it would look something like this the hardware is here let's say your laptop or physical server or computer you are going to load the operating system which is like windows or ubuntu okay if you are a mac user the mac os and then you will install all the applications here application can be anything a media player your gns software uh, the word documents office microsoft office basically so all the application that you load on os okay so the problem with the, this kind of setup is the hardware can be a single core single processing might be very expensive and power intense right so this is a problem with the physical the the on devices on premise devices okay now what we do is we try to do something virtual okay so in the case of virtual basically what happens is the benefit let me tell you in the case of virtualization we can run multiple operating system which we are not able to do it here we have backup and error recovery process okay if something goes down we can take a backup and just load it on another vm and bring the service up okay so this vms or or this virtualization is divided into two different types type 1 and type 2 the examples for type 1 are your vmware exi servers okay you also have something called as kvm you have the hyper v okay these are all type 1 virtualization okay what about type 2 type 2 is vmware workstation okay uh the virtual box so these are some type 2 virtualization now how does they look like if we draw redraw this kind of diagram how does these two look like so let's say these need some hardware both of them need a hardware they cannot be just floating around so even your type 1 and type 2 they both need hardware okay hardware but this hardware comes in different models okay we are we are going to discuss that so they comes either in the rack model or the tower model and they are not like your laptop or computer okay they come with like 32 core processors you can have 1 tb of ram you can have like 1 uh, tb of Uh, uh, SGD, okay. Similar way, it's very, very uh, bulky or very huge kind of servers which we take for virtualization. Okay. So on the top of this hardware, what we install is we install the virtualization software, something called as hypervisor. So both of them will have hypervisors. Okay. so like say in case of hardware 
we have the CPUs, the RAM, the core and all those things, right? Similar way, in the case of hypervisor, the virtual machine is going to create the CPU. So, so basically, hypervisor is something which is going to take care of the virtualization CPU, uh, the RAM and all other things and both the, both the types, okay? On the top of this, we are going to load our virtual, virtual machine. So let's say I have VMs here. So this is my VM virtual machine, virtual, virtual machine. Let's say virtual machine two, oh, sorry, one, two, three, and four. Over here, okay. Okay, over here, I missed one thing. That is in the case of type two, we have operating system, okay, hardware operating system hypervisors okay and then we create vms vm 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 and and the rest of vm what are about this vms about this vms are those applications okay so in the case of type 1 above vm we place the os operating systems Okay, and over here we will again place operating system. Now you might be wondering why are we placing two times operating system in the case of type 2 because we already have a operating system and top of them we are again installing operating system. Okay, now now about this operating system we will in install the applications. Application can be Dropbox, WhatsApp, anything. Okay, similar way we can also install application within this virtual machine. We can install application here. We can install app application. Similar way, we can have application, application, uh, application, and application. Okay. So there's one difference here. If you notice, that is, you are going to install operating system, and top of that, you are going to have a hypervisor. Okay. What is the example that I gave you? It's a VMware workstation if you just remember about your lab the ccnp lab which you do it on a vmware where is this vmware installed it's installed on the top of your operating system right so your win so, and where is your windows being loaded up it's on your laptop on your computer right so you have your laptop or computer which comes with some certain processor and ram on top of that you have your operating system on top of operating system, you are installing some hypervisor. Hypervisor is something like which provides virtualization, like for example, VMware workstation, okay, or virtual box. So this is a hypervisor for you. On top of hypervisor, you are creating virtu multiple virtual machines, okay, uh, might be virtual machine for GNS, virtual machine for EVNG, virtual machine for something else, right? On and on the top of each virtual machine, you can deploy Windows once again. You can deploy the Ubuntu. You can deploy it for something, some other uh, vendor uh, practice, right? So basically, this is how the type 2 looks like. In the case of type 1, you buy a server from the market. You deploy it on the rack. And on the rack or on the uh, on the device, once you boot it up, you are going to install hypervisor. You are not going to install operating system. Okay, you are going to install hypervisor. Now these hypervisors, examples like EXI, they basically is a package of hypervisor plus the Linux in the background. Okay, so basically, let's say in this way that this is a hypervisor which we install on the top of hardware but it itself is kind of a package which has both operating system and the exi hypervisor process okay and where do we create vms or, or different vms we create it directly on the exi page okay so in the exi page i i go to exi page i say that i need to create one vm i'll give some memory some hard disk some uh, percentage of ram and then on above that vm i'm going to install some operating system it can be a linux or a windows 
and on top of that i install my application where the rest are similar okay the only difference is about hypervisor where have you configured it when you have a server it doesn't make sense you install some operating system like linux or uh, windows and then on top of that hypervisor uh, th there's a drastic change between the two okay in the case of this example the hypervisor is going to support just 64 gb of ram because this kind of deployment is usually seen in the case of laptop and computer you have your windows running you need some virtual virtualization where you can run some other operating system and see what are the benefit what are the different features right or you can run some gns or something like that right so you need virtualization so in in this case the hypervisor will be your vmware workstation which is uh, which is installed over operating system but in the case of type 1 you just buy hardware and on the top of hardware you're directly installing hypervisor and the hypervisor itself is like a vmware uh, dashboard where you can create uh, multiple vm instances you can allot some uh, memory uh, the hard disk and give it to the concerned people and they will install whatever uh, operating system they need and whatever application they need okay so this is your virtualization where you don't need multiple devices to install multiple vendors or operating system for testing basis you have one devices with the help of hypervisor which is used for allocating ram and cpu and all those things you can build your multiple vms and on that you can uh, put your operating system and then you can make use of the applications okay so let's say these vms okay these vm have some disadvantage okay so what can be the disadvantage of vms say for example you wanted to install a very small package a package uh, might be for a free radius which is just a 5 mb file si file size okay why do you think you need such thing uh, to be installed in vm you could have installed directly on, on the top of operating system right let's say the operating system was windows but free radius runs on linux now do you think you are going to remove your operating system just sake of testing one software no what you do is you you are going to install vmware on the top of vmware you are going to install vm okay on top of vm you are going to install ubuntu and within ubuntu you are going to install the application okay the application consists of 5 mb your ubuntu uh, is something 3 gb now this is where you see the disadvantage to test a small package you just had to install the 3 gb of linux version right i know they we get linux uh, tiny versions and all those which takes like 100 mb 200 300 mb okay but let's let's say a windows operating system which you do not get in tiny versions minimum they are like 3 4 gb to maximum 10 gb 12 gb 15 gb as well some some versions of windows server and all okay so just to try something you are going to install a very huge operating system so that's one disadvantage but let's say from the advantage point of view you want to test some operating system some application you don't have to even spoil your operating system by or corrupting your operating system by installing or testing something you just can uh, install vm and you can test it okay
so that is regards to the vir uh, virtu uh, virtual machines now i want to tell about containers let's say i have hardware i have the operating system uh, let's say windows okay so what this containers does is they need a container engine and on top of container engine they have the multiple containers okay so let's say i created a container for application i created another container for another application and so on okay so this container is like a package might be this is my aaa service might be this is for my dhcp service might be this is for my network automation container right you you are aware about the gns where we have those appliances where there are lot of containers containers for uh, aaa dhcp network automation for Mo mozilla right so basically how are they created they they are a lightweight virtual machines we we can also call it as light weight vms okay but they are not like a vm because in the case of vm you deploy some operating system and you can have option of installing multiple applications right when i say vm let's say i created a vm on the top of vm v we install whatever operating system we need it can be windows and on the windows we can install multiple application like whatsapp dropbox uh, mozilla chrome gns everything whereas container is something which you can put a package which which, which is a pa stand alone packages okay you put a uh, put a package within this and you can just use it it's like a play and plug like a lightweight uh, thing okay which looks like vm but it is on over of vm itself so this is how the container or the package will look like so what are the advantage of containers they are small in size okay to test a aaa server you don't need some uh, graphical or something right so you can develop a package which can have both the features of radius testing and tecas server testing might be they max they take maximum of only 5 mb so they are very small in size and you can run both the services inside this container they are very fast fast in the sense easy to deploy okay so they 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 don't need a very huge virtual servers with lot of ram or cpu they are just a small package which you can install it anywhere Porti portability okay so portability is something where the container image has everything the application need okay so you can create a container on your local machine and you can just push this container onto your office machine and in in your office as well you can make use of this container isolation okay so with the isolation it's something when well, let's say if one container okay let's say this is my gns inside gns i am running my topology and inside this topology i had the container aaa now for some reason this got corrupt what do you do you just delete and then you go here and you just drag and place it here now you have your new instance of aaa running right so they are isolated so basically they uh, corrupt of one doesn't mean that they will corrupt the entire original container itself you have your container on your on your left side you can drag and place it okay isolations scalability so what do you understand by scalability it's basically when you have identical con uh, containers uh, you can scale them out okay 
लेट से आई हैड ए कंटेनर कॉल्ड टूल बॉक्स और टूल किट वॉट आई कैन डू इज आई कैन पुट मल्टीपल फीचर्स हियर लेट से वन पैकेज इज फॉर डी एच सी पी टेस्टिंग और वन पैकेज इज फॉर ऑटोमेशन आई हैव अनदर पैकेज फॉर एस एन एम पी राइट सो स्केलेबिलिटी द वे वी कैन डेवलप द कंटेनर okay and there is something called as docker okay so what are these docker we we usually use containers and dockers most of the time right so docker is something where this containers rely say for example i have my hardware okay on the top of hardware i have the operating system on top of operating system i have the docker okay and on these dockers are the containers a uh, different containers this container i have for triple a this container i have for dhcp this container i have for snmp package service this is for network automation so we call them individually as uh, containers and those containers relies on the top of docker okay so there is a famous website which is called as docker hub docker hub dot com so if you go to this docker hub dot com you will see there are lot of containers uh, which they uh just provide to the services or they provide it to the uh, customers whoever need it okay so this is regards to the containers regarding cloud com computing okay so we all know we were all dependent on a bare metals okay bare metal servers okay something like this this is an example of bare metals okay they are physic they are, they had to be purchased physically and kept in your infrastructure the problem with these past few years was they used to be limited in size okay they they, they didn't have lot of ram and all those things that was an exam uh, that was a situation but nowadays these kind of bare metal servers they come in very huge uh numbers like a uh, very high server uh, processing speed the cpus the ram okay <clears throat> which we can place it uh and we can use it okay they they basically come in two different methods as well one is called as tower and the other one is called as a rack okay so let me show you tower servers these are tower servers which we can keep in the house where we we can keep it somewhere where we have spaces but not in data centers because in data centers we paid to the building on on the basis of the square feet right so this kind of servers will take lot of space and practically not a good solution to keep a bulky boxes and wasting the space right 
so we have something called as a rack servers something like this okay which is very smaller in size now we can also bundle it like five six rack servers and use it as a single product so these are something which we keep in the rack they also come with the rack mountable technology okay So similar way, we also have something called as server virtualization. So one best example for server virtualization, I can show my own task manager. Okay. So if you see my task manager, this is my uh, processing unit. Okay, and you see, I have some core and some processor. Okay, so basically, using this core and processor, I can achieve the server virtualization. If if I I, I have my laptop with running this core and processor, I can do some kind of virtualization. I can install uh, the hypervisor here. Say for example this is my hypervisor on the top of hypervisor i can put multiple vms okay and i can test many things so so let's say inside gns i was able to test a lot of things inside a ubuntu server i can do a testing so basically these are all vms okay which is on top of my hypervisor hypervisor is used to allot the resource uh, uh, numbers okay so let's say on my vm i say that memory is this processor is this hard disk is this so that's the job of hypervisor okay and these are all part of uh, these are part of server virtualization so like vmware virtual box microsoft uh, hyper v so these are all providing those number of core processor ram right so basically uh, this these are the virtual server uh, virtualizations okay so you have on one side your real hardware which you can put a hypervisor and you can give them on a vm to many uh, let's say we can create multiple vm similar way on this server i can just create uh, my own vm setup and i can share it with different people there's something called as cloud computing okay so what is cloud company uh, computing so let's say there is a company like dropbox so what does dropbox does they offer some services okay they are offering some services so basically cloud computing is something where uh, they have to offer various services and customer will be able to buy them okay they'll pay and the customer will buy it so there is no need of any human interventions right because they are already set up everything is being developed and now dropbox is selling their package you go to their website you just fill up your basic thing your credit card you pay them and you get the services right no no human required at that moment so basically it's all cloud compute computing where com where these uh, enterprises have built the package and they are ready to offer their services that they have multiple services you can buy anything from them so what is the advantage of cloud computing is they are on demand okay so on demand self services you can buy and you can just uh, use them if you want you know, like say for example netflix you just go you buy and you are ready to use it you don't have to wait someone assigning you something right so they are all self services if you want to terminate the package you can just cancel it and th that's done 
so on demand self services broad network access okay so what is broad network access so basically it's available on multiple platforms say for example smartphone ipad mobile uh, on your tv okay broad network access resource pooling so let's say you had a service on your uh, website and the traffic hit was more so there is chances the whole website goes down right so resource pooling is something where when you receive lot of traffic multiple servers should be created automatically in the back end so you have multiple servers they start processing this traffic instead of they dropping them okay resource pooling Uh, rapid elasticity okay so this is a uh, this is a uh, benefit or this is a feature where cloud providers say for example dropbox is not going to assign a fixed number to any user okay he is not going to say that the user is only up to say 50 gb or something but he is just making it more dynamic in nature that means if there were more files you are going to send it which is going to cross 55 gb or might be 60 gb you will be sent a separate bill saying that you have exceeded and you need to pay for the additional 5 or 10 gb okay rapid elex uh, elasticity you don't have to be worried that the 50 gb is consumed and the rest of file will get aborted file transfer so you can use you you can use but they will send you a bill which you have to pay it later and measured transparency or measured service so basically each and everything that you do on the cloud computing you you are uploading something you are downloading something there are multiple traffic hitting on a daily basis let's say thousands of users per day so everything is been tracked and we pay them we pay to this cloud providers right so it's a me measured service it's not that you don't use and and they are going to impose you a very uh, huge bill right okay so here the last topic from virtualization point of view is the cisco switch virtualization so we discussed what is virtualization what is type 1 and type 2 virtualization what is cloud computing uh, what are different cloud deployment models okay and now we are going to see what is a cisco switch virtualization so you might be aware of the fact that earlier all this routers switches firewalls they used to be on premises okay on premises in the sense they used to be on their hardwares they they, they are a physical boxes okay if i need some router i have to pay for the router cisco is going to give me the box a real box and then i am going to cable and i am going to use it okay now what due to this virtualization most of routers which is firewalls can be virtualized okay say for example the vh cloud of your sd wan right we know that vh is the data plane and this data plane is now virtualized okay we have uh, uh we have the virtualization from 
uh, two brands one is called as viptela and we also have the cisco boxes okay so basis on virtualization we can place them in the sd wan technology similar way we have the cloud service routers csr 1000v we also have the asa virtual that's why we have this in in our ccnp gns lab the virtualization right i don't have a asa box and i'm not demonstrating asa on its physical appearance okay so we have the virtual image and we deployed it inside our gns and we are good to go similar way we have something called as uh, cloud service platform okay we have xrv 9000 we have these fire powers which are on next generation firewall virtualization we have virtual security appliance we have email security appliance uh, advanced malware protection so basically all virtual okay so hold together this topic of cisco virtualization we call it as virtual network function in short form vnf okay so these are some vnf example from cisco cisco vn f okay virtual network function so these are some examples for the same okay now if you remember we also discussed about virtualize virtualizing two devices or four devices right so in the case of the access distribution layers i told you uh, the 3750 the 3850 they have a feature called as stack wise okay stack wise is a kind of virtualization what does stack wise does so let's say i have a box of 3850 okay if i keep two box of 3850 and if i connect between them so basically this will be looped and due to the loop one interface will be always down right so this is not a better approach in the case of enterprises so what i would do is i would keep 3850 and top of this i would keep another 3850 okay and the prerequisite here is i have a special cable which i connect from one of 3850 to another 3850 and the second link of it from the first switch to the second switch okay so this way we connect to 3850 but logically they now look like a single piece of 3850 okay so this is how we virtualize the two devices into one how who who becomes master and who becomes slave so basically when we have two devices one becomes or one takes up the role of master the other one takes the role of member okay so to decide master and slave they will have the priority set let's say the priority is 100 here and 110 here so basically this is a winner so it says that i am going to be the master and you become the uh, member of of the stack wise priority the default config what is default configuration so basically you have to remember remember when you have the stack wise configuration the configuration is going to take over on the switches okay so basically they will be like no configuration so so make sure that the stack wise don't corrupt your configurations okay 
there's something called as hardware and software priority okay so in the case of hardware and software priority uh the switch with highest priority okay will win the election and it will be taken as the master also there is other features let's say this version supports ip service and this supports ip base so depending upon the features the extensive feature the device has to offer they 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 can select master and slave also there is one more criteria for this that is the mac address so the switch with the lowest mac address can become master okay so that is in the case of stack wise the concept holds good for distribution versus core as well and if i have 4550 devices or 6500 devices in this case i have two devices a b i need to have a link between them which is called as vsl virtual switch uh, link okay so this link is important which act as a keep alive okay so what happens is logically they becomes a single unit even though they they are two they become a single unit okay so it's going to help you to achieve something like ether channel benefits okay uh, benefits from stp looping uh, the other features like non so uh, non 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 stop forwarding uh, the sso used for high availability okay stateful switch over sso so in case of vss these are the other benefits that we can see in the case of vss okay so how do we connect vss r we need two boxes and between them we connect the vsl for keep alive and all other things we are going to configure the configurations and that's pretty much enough okay so from the configuration point of view first we need to define domain okay so we need to do, define the domain here and here and then we have to define vsl virtual switch link and then finally the conver conversion command okay so with this command i say that the normal mode will be converted to vss so that's all so your switch gets converted to vss nature or the vss features and finally reboot is a good solution okay so that ends virtualization we covered much more than what your theoretical topics is so virtual switching is something like your stack wise vss uh vnf okay virtual machine we know what is virtual machine where is it loaded up on top of virtual machine what we have why do we make use of virtual machines and we know what is type 1 and type 2 hypervisors okay fine so that's pretty much end of today's class yeah blade servers are also one part of servers so these are the blade servers which i told you which which we can divide into uh, rack and uh, the the towers or 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 a blade servers okay so blade servers are basically uh, used in the data centers
these are pretty older technology the bare metal servers okay they they used to be long way, long way back not, not not we don't make use of them nowadays we have uh, the uh, the racks which has lot of hardware configurations so how does vmware exi looks like so this is the hypervisor where we can create multiple instances of vms okay this is loaded directly on a hardware it doesn't need any separate operating system but when we talk about vmware uh, workstation these workstation needs either ubuntu or windows that's why i say on top of operating system we install this kind of hypervisors okay they need a operating system all right guys so let me know if you guys have any uh, doubt okay i guess it's all good and uh, so let's meet up in the next class with with the new topic yes that's true we will be completing the whole uh, batch by next week so we are we are we are almost in the end okay so this is done we did vrf in the last class okay so this just one or two topics here and from nrc we did pbr vrf and uh, bft last week uh, so we have this topic and one of ipv6 topic so two topics here and uh, might be one day uh, two day and might be three days so yeah we are completing the entire thing by next week all right guys so have a nice day uh, see you all in the next class okay uh, take care